So, photon, okay, it has an energy equal to HF. It represents it by maybe something like this. Schematically, we often represent it with something that has it looks like a particle, but a little wavy thing in the middle. Okay, so it has both properties. It has no mass. That's key. The fact that it has no mass means that if we want to understand the universe, we need to look at photons. Mass just confuses everything because mass is just a form of energy. So forget about it. It's just energy. Mass is basically energy divided by c squared, right? Because e equals m c squared. So it has no mass, and the energy is quantized. So you can have HF, or you can have NHF, if you want to have more than one. Okay. Now an electron You could think of an electron as having mass. You could have an energy equal to a half m e v squared, where that is the mass of an electron. Okay? And v would be the velocity of an electron. Okay? I guess v is obvious. It has a very small mass. It has a mass of about 9 times by 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. But if you put an electron in an atom, then it can be quantized. Electrons in atoms are quantized because electrons in atoms only have certain orbitals. They're only a, an electron can only exist in an atom in a certain state. That's why you have these configurations that you know about in chemistry. You have things like external octets and you have these numbers 2881, 281. These are called the orbitals. So, seen some chemistry. So chemis in, in, in at when you put an electron in an atom, it becomes quantized. The, the energy is quantized if you put it in an atom. You get things called electron orbits. Okay, so one more thing. So let's just represent an atom, so, so you remind ourselves. We have neutrons and we have protons, okay? N is a neutron. P is a proton. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons don't have any charge, they're neutral, okay? So the neutrons and the protons live in the center of the atom called the nucleus. They stick together. The neutrons are basically act like glue. They, they base, you could think of the neutrons as keeping the protons together. The protons don't really want to go together. They don't want to stick together because they're both positively charged. And like charges don't like each other. So and then you can think of, here we have the electrons in these orbits. We could have, I think we can have two in that orbit. And then we have electrons in another orbit here, okay? And we can have, uh, I think we can have eight here if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they all have negative charges, okay? And then we can have one on the outside because we're representing sodium. So this is our classical atom, okay? Sodium. Now, if you want to rip an electron out of that atom, you have to give the electron a very well-defined energy. You can't rip electrons out of this atom if you just fire um, uh, a torch. If you shine a torch at it, nothing will happen. Because the torch contains photons that are too big to get in the atom. That's kind of quantum mechanics. So the bit needs to be small enough. In other words, it has to have a high enough concentrated energy to get inside the atom, give the electron the energy, and the electron leaves the atom. Okay? So to rip out an electron, 
requires an exact minimum amount of energy. Okay, so one, one minute. Okay, just last sentence. To rip out an electron requires a minimum amount of energy. In other words, you need, E needs to be bigger than or equal to H F. And the energies of all these electrons around the atoms are quantized. This is chemistry. The reason why these electrons have these orbits is because they're only allowed to have certain energies. And this is because of quantum mechanics, because you can only have certain energies. Okay.